On May the 25th, 2002, passengers boarded flight 611 at Chiang Kai-shek International Airport in Taiwan for a scheduled two-hour flight to Hong Kong International Airport. On board were two pilots, one flight engineer, 16 cabin crew members, and 206 passengers. The crew requested taxi clearance at 1457 hours, and at 1507, the flight was cleared for takeoff on runway 06. The takeoff and initial climb were normal. At 1516, the Taipei Area Control Center instructed the aircraft to climb to flight level 350. The last radio transmission received from the aircraft was an acknowledgement of the instruction at 15, 16, 31. Shortly after, at 15, 28, 03, radar contact was lost and the plane plummeted to the ground. An immediate search and rescue operation was initiated. After an extensive operation, 175 of the 225 bodies on board were recovered. The others are still missing, but presumed dead. The crash remains the deadliest aviation disaster in Taiwan's history. In this video, we will analyze what caused the accident and explore the measures that could have been taken to prevent it. The aircraft involved in the accident was a Boeing 747-200 and was the only passenger plane remaining in the China Airlines fleet. It was 23 years old and had completed over 64,800 flight hours. It had four Pratt & Whitney JT-9D-7AW engines and could accommodate 355 passengers. At the time of the crash, the plane had been sold to Orient Thai Airlines for $1.45 million and was on its penultimate flight before being handed over to its new owner. However, following the disaster, the contract was cancelled. China Airways had three other 747-200s that had already been converted into freighters. In the wake of the crash, all of them were immediately grounded for maintenance checks. On the flight that day were the captain, his first officer, and a flight engineer. All three were citizens of the Republic of China and were reported to be in good health before takeoff. Along with the pilots, there were 16 cabin crew members, all who had received training from China Airlines. It is believed that the cabin crew had no prior warning that the plane was going to crash and were likely out of their seats performing cabin service when the accident occurred. In addition to the crew, there were 206 paying passengers on board that included 114 members of a Taiwanese group tour to mainland China alongside Yu Ji Cheng, a Taiwanese politician, and two reporters from the United Daily News. The majority of the people on board were from Taiwan, although nine were from China, five from Hong Kong, one from Singapore, and one from Switzerland. After contact was lost, a military Lockheed C-130 Hercules aircraft was scrambled and spotted a crashed airliner in the sea 23 nautical miles northeast of Makung, Pengu Islands. An oil slick was also sighted at 1705. The recovery of the first body was at 1810. A search and rescue operation was launched and searchers were able to recover 15% of the wreckage, including parts of the cockpit. None of the wreckage showed any signs of burns, explosives, or gunshots. All four engines were recovered and were found to have had no malfunction before the crash. Fragments of the plane were found in the ocean and around Taiwan, including in the city of Changua. The aircraft had not issued any distress signals or communication before the incident. However, the flight data showed that the plane was gaining altitude at a faster pace in the 27 seconds leading up to the breakup, although the additional altitude gain was still within the plane's design limits. Shortly before the plane broke apart, 
one of its four engines began providing slightly less thrust and eventually split into four pieces while flying at an altitude of just below 35,000 feet. The data is backed by the fact that some lighter items from inside the aircraft were found as far as 80 miles away from the crash site in villages located in central Taiwan. These items included magazines, documents, luggage, photographs, new Taiwan dollars, aircraft safety cards, and a blood-stained pillowcase with the China Airlines logo. The remains of the victims were recovered either by surface vessels or by the larger wreckage recovery vessels. 82 of the bodies were found floating on the ocean surface of the Taiwan Strait. The others were found within the wreckage, although sadly, 50 of the victims have never been located. Each body was assigned a recovery number according to when they were found. For example, the first body was assigned number one. Air accident investigators matched the bodies with their assigned seats on the aircraft. They were then photographed and their clothing and possessions were catalogued before being returned to their families. The victims were identified either by visual identification, personal effects, fingerprints, dental examination, or DNA testing. Only the three pilots were autopsied and had specimens from their bodies sent for toxicological examination. The toxicological results for all three were negative for illicit drugs and over-the-counter medications. None of the other passengers or cabin crew's bodies were autopsied as there is no legal requirement to do so. Although x-rays were taken of 10 of the victims, these were carried out in a makeshift morgue. Remarkably, most of the recovered bodies were intact, although they had suffered catastrophic injuries. These included expansion of lung tissue, subcutaneous emphysema, bleeding from the nose and mouth, severe head injuries, tibia and fibula fractures, significant back abrasion, pelvic injuries, and other more traumatic injuries consistent with a plane crash. However, there were no carbon remains found on any of the recovered bodies or their clothes, and no sign of burns or blast damage. To help with identification, China Airlines requested relatives to submit blood samples for DNA testing. It's worth pointing out that although a lot of the victims' bodies were intact, it doesn't mean they were alive or even conscious when the plane disintegrated. According to experts, when the aircraft broke apart at such a high altitude, the air pressure difference between the outside air and the cabin air would have rendered the passengers instantly unconscious. Falling from 35,000 feet would likely take around three minutes before hitting the ground. If they were still alive, they wouldn't have known what was happening and would have perished on landing in an unconscious state. So what caused Flight 611 to break apart in the sky with no apparent warning? Well, it seems the damage was done over 20 years earlier. On February the 7th, 1980, China Airlines Flight 009, later renamed to 611, was en route from Stockholm Arlanda Airport to Taiwan International Airport with scheduled stops at King Abdulaziz International Airport and Kai Tak, Hong Kong International Airport. During the landing in Hong Kong, a part of the plane's tail scraped along the runway, causing damage. The same day, the aircraft was flown back to Taiwan and temporary repairs were conducted the next day. A more permanent fix was carried out by a team from China Airways between May 23rd and May 26th, 1980, after which the aircraft resumed normal service. However, the permanent repair was not carried out as per the Boeing Structural Repair Manual. Instead of replacing the entire affected skin or installing a reinforcing doubler plate to restore structural strength, the China Airlines team installed a doubler over the damaged area. Unfortunately, the doubler was too small and did not cover the damaged area completely. As a result, scratches were left outside the outermost row of fasteners securing the doubler, 
which made the aircraft vulnerable to cracks forming around those exposed scratches during flight. After flying thousands of miles without any incident, the aircraft finally gave way. On May the 25th, 2002, exactly 22 years after the repair, the hull broke open in midair due to fatigue cracking caused by the inadequate maintenance. This resulted in a rapid decompression, which caused the aircraft's fuselage to separate at section 46 near the main wing box. The remaining part of the aircraft, which was forward of section 46, entered into a sudden descent, leading to the separation of all four engines from the wings almost simultaneously. The crew and passengers had no warning and no chance of survival as the plane plunged 35,000 feet to its doom. Analysis of the wreckage discovered that the lower aft fuselage between stringers S-48L and S-49L had sustained fatigue damage. Furthermore, it was confirmed that there were multiple instances of damage, including a 15.1 inch through thickness fatigue crack and some smaller fatigue cracks. These cracks were traced back to the tail strike accident that occurred in 1980. An analysis of the residual strength of the aircraft showed that if a crack of 58 inches or more in length were to occur, it would weaken the fuselage during normal operation loads. It is suspected that a crack of at least 71 inches in length was present before the aircraft broke up mid-flight. Unfortunately, the aircraft's routine maintenance inspections did not detect the ineffective 1980 structural repair and the fatigue cracks beneath the repair doubler. Although it is impossible to determine when the fatigue cracks propagated through the skin thickness. Following the investigation, China Airlines disputed much of the report. However, it was revealed that an opportunity to detect the shoddy repair was missed many years before the disaster. In 1988, a fatigue incident occurred with a Boeing 737, which led to a mandate that required airlines worldwide to review the aircraft's skin on all the planes, including aging 747s. The doomed aircraft was inspected in line with the new mandate and photographs from the inspection showed discoloration at the site of the repair. These stains were attributed to nicotine caused by passenger smoking, which was allowed on board until 1985. If the maintenance staff had investigated how the stains got there, the cracks on the fuselage would have been detected and the plane would most likely never have embarked on its tragic last flight. Remarkably, there had been a previous incident where a 747 aircraft had crashed due to defective repair work after a tail strike. On August 12, 1985, Japan Airlines Flight 123 from Tokyo to Osaka, Japan experienced a severe structural failure and decompression 12 minutes after takeoff. The plane managed to fly under minimal control for a further 32 minutes before crashing in the area of Mount Takamagahara. 520 people on board died, although miraculously, four survived. After the crash, the Aircraft Accident Investigation Commission of Japan, with the assistance of the US National Transportation Safety Board, determined that a defective repair carried out by Boeing technicians following a tail strike incident that happened seven years prior was the cause of the crash. Similar to Flight 611, the defective repair eventually failed, leading to a rapid decompression that tore off a significant part of the tail resulting in the loss of all onboard hydraulic systems and disabling the aircraft's flight controls. To date, that crash is the deadliest single aircraft accident in aviation history. Following the tragic crash of Flight 611, China Airlines implemented several safety improvements, which included increasing inspections for fatigue damage, improving maintenance procedures, and increasing training for pilots and crew members. The unfortunate event led to critical safety improvements in the aviation industry and the lessons learned from this crash will hopefully help prevent any similar tragedies from occurring in the future. Sadly, it has come too late for the people on board Flight 123 
and Flight 611. At the military cemetery in Lintao Park, Huxi Township, China Airlines erected a monument to commemorate the victims of the air crash. The text on the monument translates to On May 25th, 1991, at 15.28.28 p.m., China Airlines Flight 611 from Taipei to Hong Kong encountered an unknown accident while ascending to an altitude of 35,000 feet. There were 206 passengers on board, including 19 pilots, co-pilots, and service personnel. All of them fell into the sea near Muduyu Island in Pengu and died. The world was shocked by this moment of misfortune. After all parties immediately mobilized personnel and ships to search and rescue, it took several months to recover only 175 bodies. The wreckage of the plane has been largely searched for, but the remains of the victims could not be recovered. It has not been found for a long time in the vast sea, and it is hard to find any more. Where does the soul go? We offer our condolences. After the investigation into the crash was completed, China Airlines set up a small supplementary monument next to the main monument, describing the process of investigation. It reads, On May 25th, 1994, the third anniversary of the crash of China Airlines Flight 611 coincided with the fact that the Flight Safety Committee of the Executive Yan had just released its investigation report on the incident not long ago. According to the report, although the Flight Safety Committee was still unable to determine the exact cause of the accident, it believed that the accident was related to the disintegration in the air, probably due to the failure of the structure at the bottom of the rear section of the fuselage when the CI-611 was approaching the cruising altitude, and it could not be ruled out. Over the past 20 years, the maintenance and inspection of this machine will inevitably have flaws that cannot be found by precision instruments. However, there are certain standards for aircraft maintenance and they must be certified by various relevant agencies. The accident still requires the joint efforts of all parties and a humility review, so that such an accident will never happen again. The company punishes the past and the future, and it will be heartbroken, and it will be a supplementary record, comfort the dead, and encourage it. Remember China Airlines. Every year around May 25th, family members of the victims visit the monument to place flowers and pay their respects. May the 225 lives that were lost that day rest in peace.